Good morning. China's growth story has no bounds. Boosting this expansion drive is an impressive retrenchment fling thanks to China's high-speed railway network that's set to reduce boundaries drastically and dramatically between towns and cities. China's high-speed railway network is shaping up at an extraordinary speed. The country saw its first experimental high-speed railway in operation in 2003 and by 2014 it would have reached 28,000 kilometers in length. This is twice as large as similar networks in the rest of the world combined. The high-speed railway promises to shrink travel time between the country's north and south ends by an estimated 65%, while the east and west end will see a reduction of 75%. This means China, as measured by travel time, will shrink to 9% of its current size. High-speed railway can truly revolutionize transportation in China and enable it to narrow the gap in regional development due to its much bigger and cheaper passenger haul capacity as compared to air travel. Transportation is highly correlated to economic growth. Worldwide trends show a direct correlation between transportation and GDP growth. Going forward, China is expected to grow at a rate of 7-8%. to 8%. Like Japan of the 90s, the country seems to be rolling in a phase of decent, if not extraordinary, development. By that pace, China's passenger and freight traffic would be 2.2 times and 1.8 times respectively in relation to the 2008 figures. With the benefit of today's technology and information dissemination, the people mobility in China is definitely on the rise. With huge demand going ahead, China is doing the right thing by investing in the greenest mode of transportation to avoid potential energy and environmental crisis. Compared to other modes, trains emit much less carbon dioxide. As far as energy consumption is concerned, other modes on an average consume six times more energy than trains. The benefits are crystal clear. Chinese railway network is overstretched due to the lack of relative infrastructure spending. By 2014, however, China would have spent 500 billion US dollars on high-speed railway. On the demand side, the average ticket price at three times more than the conventional may be harsh on the pockets. But several factors promise the commercial viability of the venture. One among them is the rising affluence of the Chinese. Also, the individually owned passenger cars reached 28.8 million in 2008, 120 times the figures of 1990. Another influence is the monopoly of Ministry of Railways in providing value-added services by phasing out low-quality services like the green skin cars. As regards competition, conventional trains are the only threat to HSR, but given the fact that MOR can curb their usage at will, there's hardly any competition in the real sense. To top it all, the government's clean energy and pro-environment policy with its ambitious target of energy intensity and carbon dioxide emission cut will boost the MOR drive further. The most important change will be brought about by the HSR will be the rise of the hinterland. By 2020, high-speed railway is estimated to reach the 1600 billion per kilometer mark, still less than 50% of the high-speed railway's capacity. Based on 40 cents per kilometer rates, this would reap revenues of 94 billion US dollars at an investment of 600 billion US dollars. The rate of interest is not less imperative given the high risk stakes and at the indirect benefits annual savings of 35 billion US dollars due to curbed oil usage from reduced road and air travel, 4 billion, saved annu 4 billion US dollars saved annually from carbon dioxide emission drops and 33 billion US dollars from reduced travel time. The thrill of high speed promises to fetch high returns as well. No wonder the Minister of Railways, Liu Zizhum, nicknamed Leap Liu, has vowed to cover over 13,000 kilometers by the time he retires. Given the fact that China has a sole 405-kilometer experimental high-speed railway when he took over the reins, the leap is obvious. Thank you.